Team Meek tweet. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. Uh-huh. I love you as an artist. Uh-huh. But the first time I ever seen you was Meek on Meek's page. Okay. I promise you. Uh-huh. And, bro, I, I, seen, I, I found you when he posted you, just walking with a bunch of people around you. And I said, damn, that's your fire, nigga. Uh-huh. I'm going to keep it 100. And by the way, you know, me and Meek, we have had our issues, but like, you know, we cool. It's whatever. And at a point, I did think that there was going to be a situation there. I know there's a lot of business between it. Uh-huh. But what Meek tweeted recently was an indictment on your label. But mm-hmm. you have a good relationship with your label. Yeah. And he said he felt that your label kind of robbed him of maybe a situation with you. Yeah. You've addressed this before, though, but it didn't feel like that was the case. Mm-hmm. Do you have a different perspective now that you see his perspective? I mean, I called me as soon as that shit happened. FaceTime. Got his number, FaceTime. What's going on, bro? He gave me the whole rundown. My only situation with him, he know this, so I can say whatever I want to say. One thing you're not going to ever hear me do, I'm a real nigga. I don't speak on shit with niggas. I explain this to him. Please, let's not speak on our business and situations if we can't even call each other on the phone. That's one thing that I don't do. If I can't call you on the phone as a man, be like, hey, I feel like this, I feel like that. You feel like this, you feel like that. I never speak on it. Even if I don't fuck with you like that. Even if I fuck with you, I'm never going to speak on it if I can't have that communication, that open dialogue where you understand me and I understand you. So I made that shit clear to him and, I, and, and he understood that shit. And <clears throat> we just had a conversation just about his, his, his perspective of it. And it was a valid point, valid, valid situation with what he got going on, his situation with Atlantic. It's not my situation with them. So I But it was a point you had a dream chaser chain. For sure. But that's because he fucked with me. To the, well, to the fans. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I'm one for the one for that. So I'll be seeing what's going on behind the scenes. But as a fan, when I see, if, if I see him give a chain to a nigga who I see him posting, uh-huh. man, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be some situation. And I'm going to be honest uh-huh. with you. And I'm going to shoot Meek some bail. And by the way, again, me and Meek ain't the best of friends. We ain't enemies either. But I do think his perspective on the industry, for example, I've seen him have two gripes. Like, with the situation with you, not mm-hmm. with you exactly, but, mm-hmm. but just how it went out with you. And like Melly, mm-hmm. I felt like he tried to use his platform to introduce mm-hmm. people to those artists, mm-hmm. you and Melly. And mm-hmm. then I felt like he thought that would result in him having some type of situation mm-hmm. that never ended up happening. Okay. So I understand, I understand it. On, and now, on I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it real clear. Look, I'm going to... I'm I'm so with me, you know, my situation with Atlantic was already solidified due to Nipsey Hussle walking me and Kiefer in the building. You know what I'm saying? He gave us that big brother love, that big brother hug, ain't never wanted nothing from us. You get what I'm saying? All money in. I was really supposed to be all money in. I can show you a picture where I had the really? Dream Chaser chain and the all money in chain on at the same time. While he working on Victory Lap at the Studio Encore in Burbank, I'm fucking with him, pulling up on him. He like, he telling Bird, like, we need to, let's, let's construct. You should have been little, on Nipsey shit. Let's construct a little situation. Okay. I ain't got to be an all money in artist. It's a difference. I could be managed by all money in, meaning that situation, certain things that I might get myself into, he might have his hands in it. But it's a lot of shit that that man did for me. He ain't never asked for nothing back. I ain't saying that he wasn't going to ask for nothing back, but it's a lot of shit that he did we, for me. We talking about Nipsey or we talking about Meek? Talk about Nipsey. Okay. Before, the, before the Meek situation, you know what I'm saying? Like, Nipsey took me to Powerhouse, had me performing in front of people that didn't even know nothing I put out. This was before Die Young, I think. I was doing Fuck It Up at Powerhouse. Niggas didn't know me like that. This was off the first mixtape. You get what I'm trying to say? Are, are you so so as a newer artist, right? Are you taking like all those experiences that Nip is probably helping you with? Are you taking it like, man, you know, we we got some affiliations, you know, in the streets or whatever. Like yeah. he, he's doing that on behalf of that. Or are you thinking that, man, this is business and he helping me out? I mean, both because at the end of the day, you don't never want to plant a seed and the flower don't grow. You know what I mean? So mm. it's like. 
shit, the nigga might have been doing this shit, but just from my perspective, he ain't never asked me for shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, situation. Yeah, but he was doing a lot of shit before he even asked me for any type of situation at all. It was never no intention behind it. Like, nigga, he had me on tour with Robin Hood. Shout out Robin Hood. He had me on um, tour with Post Malone. Austin Rosen put the play together, but that was between them niggas. He put me on tour on an arena tour off of a mixtape, nigga. How you make that shit happen? That's Hustle, Hood, Austin Rosen. You feel me? That wasn't... The, the other side of things, you know what I'm saying? Like the other side of things definitely hyped me up, put me in the position, they fucked with me. You know what I'm saying? DC, they they did what they were supposed to do. They fucked with me. And like I told Meek, I'm forever, nigga, whatever you need from me, you know it's always a green light. You feel me? But it's well, like- So where and, and how, again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of asking in a fan perspective because I know how I got introduced to you. So where did that whole thing where like, you know, I don't lie. I felt like you were about to be a dream chaser artist. Like, yeah. where did that come from then? Because, you know, I talked as, to Meek when he history. was in jail. I, I talked to Meek when he was in jail. I had him on the phone. Dallas put me on the phone with Meek. You know what I'm saying? I, he put me on the phone with Meek, set us up when he came to L.A. for the first time since he was out. I pulled up on him. We caught a vibe from the beginning. But my whole point is just like, hey, you know, <clears throat> do things not with the intention of, like, receiving shit, man. Do shit from the kindness of your heart. And Meek is the type of nigga to do everything from the kindness of his heart. But I just don't want the blogs and the narratives to think like, oh, he, you know what I'm saying? He he felt like he was robbed, this and this and that. That problem is with them people. That's not with me. You That's know what I'm saying? Like our shit was, yeah, our shit was like more genuine. So whatever had to happen on the back end, that really not, that's not going to affect me. I'm going to get, I'm going to get all the money I ever made from them. I'm going to get it regardless. And that was his point. Like he's making his money. He going to do that shit regardless. Y'all split whatever they did. You know what I'm saying? That's what they did. But that situation really, it has to do with, with them. Like that really don't got nothing to do with me because I Does always. Does Atlantic approach you and say, because this is what I would do if I'm Atlantic. I would approach you and be like, yo. Man, me tweaking right now, yo, yo. Could you just like put out, could you let people know that we're, we're good? Because, you know, obviously, if you came out, you were like, but I yo, feel listen, like I'm we cool with Atlantic, good, but to though. keep it real, man, me did a lot for me. They should have cut that nigga a check. If you come out and say that, Atlanta look a little weird, but you clearly, your business is good. I mean, I just felt like my business is good. One thing I'm never going to do is talk about anybody I told you in the beginning of this situation. I'm never going to talk about another nigga's situation because I don't know what the fuck he, he do. Just like he don't know what I do. I'll probably go ask Atlantic for a bag. After we get off this interview, I need a bag for this, that, and the third. Then As cut the check. Should. Whatever. You get what I'm trying to say? So it's like... He may have his own instances outside of my situation. My situation just may be the situation to make them listen to a close ear because I'm the guy over there. You know what I'm saying? Like my situation may be the, the door to kick it down or whatever, but I just feel like his situation is more so with them. It really ain't with me. Like I said, I tweeted and told him I'm a dream chase for life, paperwork or not. I'm going to always stand behind that nigga and rock behind that nigga. Ain't, ain't nothing with me. He could pull up on me, talk to me, whatever. Like just as long as we got that understanding, it ain't shit. And if I if I could go back and do shit all over again, I'd do the shit the same. I wouldn't do nothing no different. 